eight years ago, I covered the Kickstarter prototype for this case. And since then, ah, a lot has happened, including every person who backed that project getting scammed and Calios eventually partnering with Streecom, who helped them finally bring this thing to market. And now that it's here, I gotta say, ah, it might've been worth the wait. Uh, we're good. Get it? Wait, because this thing is freaking heavy. This is a case that literally turns your PC into a phase change cooling system. Inside it are zero moving parts. No fans, no pumps, just a bunch of science and a gigantic copper heat exchanger to cool down your system. Now, we have seen products like this before, it's just that none of them, including this one up until now, have ever actually made it to market, which is why we are so stoked to finally see this beast in person. I need this plastic off right now! It's beautiful. But could anything, no matter how beautiful, possibly be worth the asking price for this? Especially when you consider that Streetcom's technology partner, Calios, hasn't always been the most ethical in the past? I don't know. But what I do know is that my farm fresh GMO free sponsor segues are always ethical. Like to our sponsor. Did I just bend it? What? Oh my God, I bent it. Oh, you did. Delete me. Just like with pretty much everything else in life, when browsing the internet, always remember safety first. Delete me's data removal plans will help you keep your private information secure online. Check out our link in the description to learn more. I just can't stop looking at it. I kid you not, this is probably the most beautiful thing I've seen since my children were born. These were at the bottom of the box. Mm-hmm, yeah, that and the uh, easy bend fins at the front. That's the thing with a boutique product like this. There's gonna be some inconveniences. For one thing, the case, before we've even installed anything in it, weighs 31 kilograms or just shy of 69 pounds. That's only true of the copper edition, which is a one of 500 limited edition, but even the aluminum one is pretty freaking heavy. As for how we ended up with one of the coppers, well, ours was originally purchased by a viewer, but at some point during the eight year wait, they got fed up and gave us their spot in line. Did we pay full pop for it then? I believe so, yeah. Okay, then it better be good. Oh, look at this. Before we look too much at that, I did figure out where all these screws came from. Oh, yeah. This one right here is supposed to oh, be yeah. like that. And the rest all were holding this evaporator onto this piece of acrylic that no longer exists. I mean, it exists. Yeah. In some ways, it exists twice as much as before. Three times. <laughs> Bright side, that gives us much easier access to the evaporator head in what Calios calls their loop heat pipe cooling system. Inside this evap, our 1233 ZDE refrigerant boils. The cold plate has a really cool design that uses capillary action as the pump for the entire system. Then that boiling fluid goes up into the heat sink on top where that thermal energy gets transferred to the air passively with no fans at all unless you install fans. Then the refrigerant condenses back into a liquid and flows back to the evaporator. Or should I say evaporators? There's one for the CPU and one for your GPU as well. The small lines are the return, which carry the liquid refrigerant down to the evaporator block. And the big ones take the evaporated gaseous refrigerant up to the radiator. The best part is that as unbelievable as all of that sounds, it's a fairly proven technology. Calios not only uses this in some of their more exotic cooling solutions for things like satellites, but they did ship us that prototype system before and it did work. They just failed to mass produce it. Thank goodness Streecom picked this up, hey? Let's build a system. One small problem, Linus. I need you to make a choice here. Mm -hmm. We haven't quite decided which power supply we're gonna use. Right. Do you wanna that be one. smart? This one, yeah, okay. <laughs> YOLO! Look, if we're gonna build a fanless system, let's build a fanless system. Really, 850 watts? Oh yeah. Who makes this? Cooler Master. Huh. 
PSU circuit loved it too. It tested really well. Oh, well that's great news, because I was gonna say, Cooler Master's had some wins and they've had some less wins. <laughs> there is one thing that is a bit more of a problem though. Yeah. You see how this only allows you to put the power supply in on its side? Yeah. This power supply specifically asks you not to do that. Right. It wants to be like that, because convection, fanless. Oh wow, I was about to install the power supply and I realized uh, I haven't looked at the accessories yet. There's definitely some stuff in here. GPU riser, that makes sense, given we might have to reposition emulate it a little. Oh my goodness, this is a lot of hardware. NVIDIA 4000 series kit. Wait, we're not. Oh yes we are. A 4090 cooled passively? Yeah, it might be a bit hot, but it'll be fine. I kept thinking, how much is this? Don't worry about it. We'll talk about that later. Included 632 thumb screws. Do we have 632 thumb screws? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, we're, we just are blind. Well, in fairness to us, the labeling all looks very incomplete. Theoretically, I think these boxes are supposed to be ticked for what these are for. This whole thing is gonna be a two screwdriver affair because some of it is Allen key and some of it is Phillips. And some of it's other Allen key. Cool. I think this is gonna be one of the little inconveniences that building in this thing is a bit of a nightmare. Oh, I see what you mean. But if we're being real, if I can afford this case, I can afford the all metal version of the LTT screwdriver coming someday, lttstore.com. Maybe. Maybe. Lining this up is a pain in the butt. You either move it too far this way and this one doesn't reach, or you move it too far that way and this thumb nut interferes. Oh, look at that. She's in there. Next, it's time for our motherboard. Well, next, it's time to put all the things on our motherboard. We've gone with the MSI Mag X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi. On it, we've gone with a Ryzen 9900. Why'd we go with a 9900X? Uh, because that's the CPU that we were able to get. Labs took all the 9800s and the 9950s. I'm just worried about the thermals. It's 120 watts, it'll be fine. It's what, 250 for the CPU? She'll be super cool. While I install our 48 gigs of DDR5 8000, okay, Alex is gonna prep the socket for a very custom CPU cooler mount. Huh, okay, sure, you got this. This is kind of cool. You can see that the motherboard tray is at a 45 degree angle in here rather than being straight up and down. This is apparently to aid with fluid circulation. Ugh. So it goes on a little something like that. I think they mostly line up. Do they line up? Um, no. But see, see look, there's a bit of flex. You can kind of, you yeah. know, yeah. Another minor inconvenience. While under normal circumstances, I would probably say, yeah, just use whatever decent thermal paste you have lying around. In this case, I want the best possible thermal paste. So in this case, we're using a nice high quality paste, Cryonaut from Thermal Grizzly. And I think that's pretty much it, hey boys? Oh no! I didn't take the peel off the bottom yet, I was just trying to hold it up. The good news is I put on so much thermal paste that I'm not gonna have to reapply it. This is cool. It looks like the hold down plate is set up for an offset mount. And so what that allows us to do is move the block this way a little bit so that our coolant goes directly over the compute dies on our Ryzen CPU. If you want to lean the case ever so slightly, that would give these a better chance of staying on. No, most computers you can build by yourself, no problem. This one you kind of want two people. Yep, agreed. Wow, it's got a very industrial look to it, hey? Yeah, it looks pretty sick. <laughs> I was gonna say, I kind of like it. Now it's time for the hard part. Getting this mounted to our GPU. I'm sure it'll be easy. Do I just have to take the whole heatsink off and then I can take off the backplate? Oh, well here, there's a couple more screws here. Yeah, but those aren't preventing me from taking off the backplate. No, I think the heatsink has to come off first. Yeah. Hey, we're discussing whether to use liquid metal or not. Alex wants to conformal coat our GPU. Like just around here. I know what you mean. I don't love it, but I don't see an alternative. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna want liquid metal to have any shot of this thing performing anywhere near maximum. Holy frig. The GPU cooler install is so complicated. Look at this thing right here. It is 17 steps. And it seems like the sort of thing where if you do a single one of these steps out of order, you need to undo the stuff until the one that you have missed because order of operations seems very important. This is gonna be really annoying. 
Now the GPU cooler is specific for each individual GPU, meaning that if you want to upgrade in the future, unfortunately you need to get a new this part and many of the other stuff so that it can go into this case. Fortunately though, they include a voucher for a free GPU cooler upgrade, which is great because everyone that backed this had to wait a whole GPU generation for it to arrive. I think I'm supposed to break this off to make it the right size. Oh, I think it's finally ready to go in here. Something like this. Very nice. Move the whole thing over. That gets plugged in. All right, we saved it. GPU's gonna live here now too. Now I just need to attach the cold plate to the GPU. Oh my God, I almost forgot. Now I can attach it. That could've been bad. This is honestly kind of scary. I was expecting there to be like some springs or something so that you can't over tighten this and crack the GPU die, but uh, they don't have anything like that. Not bad. Now all I have to do is cable everything and... Wow. Oh, you guys can't see the cool side. Wow. That looks awesome. Wow, they're really on there pretty good, hey? Oh yeah. I'm kind of impressed. For a case with no cable management provisions whatsoever, it was actually not that bad getting it to look decent. Yeah, how about that? But will it run decent? I'm just so scared. Linus didn't want us to turn it on for an entire week while he was off doing other things. It has not been tested yet. Look at it. <laughs> How could it not work? Go ahead and do the honors. I don't really know what I was expecting to happen. Yeah, there's no fans. Yeah, so is it on? Oh, there's RGB on the RAM, yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Can you hear that? Are we getting a bit of boiling coolant already? The boiling sound seems to come from the heat exchanger up here. I would have thought you'd hear the boiling in oh, the yeah. evaporator, which is literally called an evaporator, you know? Like it's in the name. How much you wanna bet that boiling noise gets way more annoying under load? I think it'll probably be quite annoying. Vance said that it sounds a lot like a toilet when it's like filling. I think is very accurate. I don't think I can unhear that now. Yeah. This is definitely the right screwdriver to build this with. Needlessly expensive and hopelessly impractical. But oh, it just feels so good, you know? Our GPU is already sitting at about 40 degrees and our CPU is over 50. This is while drawing about 50 watts on each of them, which is probably fine. Oh boy, did you see that temperature spike before the game launched? I did not. Dude, CPUs at 81. You know what's pretty impressive? How low our GPU temps are. Oh yeah, just at 60 degrees and it's at 90% load. What are our graphic settings? Cause this looks great. Uh, pretty much cranked. I am using DLSS upscaling, but um, it's set to quality and I have ray tracing on and everything. Like this is how I would play the game if I had a 4090. She's quiet eerily quiet and surprisingly the boiling doesn't seem to be any louder it's still kind of annoying it almost sounds quieter now that it's actually doing stuff the gpu side where it's working harder it's like instead of like drip 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 it's like a drizzle so it's like lighter raindrops almost on the tin roof whoa she's kicking dude anyone want marshmallows Oh, should we take off the protective plastic on the sides? Okay. Oh, back of the CPU is pretty hot. Everything's hot. I wonder if we're harming the cooling of some of the other components in here by not having the side panels on because that's what creates convection up through the bottom and potentially, you know, cools all the other little bits and bobs. Maybe we should put them on. Sure. Wow. I don't know if I would have thought it possible, but it looks even better with the glass on, dude. Oh yeah, that is sick. Now, what I want to know is, can I feel the current? I mean, I'd have to. It's got to be moving all this heat out. Wait, no way. That can't be. Look up, Alex. I think that's just from the HVAC. You think so? Yeah. So theoretically, if we block this, right? 
See, it stops. Oh, it yes, does. Yes, it wow. stops. Wow. Okay, now we move the hoodie. Dude, she moves. Yeah, that's a lot. That's so cool. We didn't even set this up as an experiment to see how much air it moved, but it, there it is. It's so high above the system. Of course, this video would be incomplete if we didn't pull out the thermal camera. I'm already finding areas on our 4090 board that are in excess of 80 degrees. How's our SSD doing down there? Uh, casual 50 degrees. Oh, oh, I think there's hotter areas underneath. 56, oh! She's hot in there, she's a hot SSD. The good news is that NAND doesn't really benefit from running colder. I guess, are those cool or is it just reflective? Okay, well here, I can touch it. Dude, it's like, yeah, it's like skin temperature. A little bit higher, oh, yeah. which checks out perfectly. So this coolant must really be ripping around in there then. You can actually feel it. You can feel the boiling. Oh yeah. It feels like there's a pump in there, which there sort of is. Yeah. Not a, you know, pump with actual moving parts in it. Just like a suction a physics pump. <laughs> <laughs> How's our poor power supply doing? Oh yeah, she's a little toasty. Ah, oh, it's 50 degrees, that's fine. Yeah, on the outside. Oh yeah. How's the other side doing? <laughs> oh dude, oh dude. I got 90 degrees under this heat sink here. What? 93.3 .3 on this chip right here. That chip has thermal compound on it. Oh, these little ones? Yep. Yeah, they did miss a couple of the GPU, whatever the heck those are. There's a couple of them here that had heat sink. This yeah. one's at 94. Oh. Nvidia probably doesn't measure those either. Oh yeah, you can really see up here just how much toastier the GPU side is. Look at that. Oh, wow, yeah, that is very apparent. The CPU is running hotter because it's a little tiny die yeah. and the thermal transfer is not as good, but that GPU is kicking out a lot more heat. Our GPU is definitely getting a little less cool though. We're sitting at 73, 74 degrees now, and that's normal for a system like this to take a little while to fully heat soak. So let's give it some time and see how it goes. Not only is the system still running, but our temps haven't changed much, and especially our FPS hasn't changed. Both our CPU and GPU are still turboing pretty well. She's still kicking out heat. And look, I can't promise that you'd get results like this in a room that's a little higher than room temperature, and I can't promise anything with respect to the long-term longevity of these components, but what I can say is damn, it works. Did you tell them this is after like four hours? I didn't. It's been running all day, you guys. And the best part is that while I did have my initial disagreement with Kalios's leadership about their handling of the original system, they ultimately did step up and offer people the opportunity to get a refund if they weren't happy with how long they waited. It took a while, but now that it's here. Coolest case of the year? Of the year? Of the eight years. <laughs> I'm really glad I got a copper one. The performance is not supposed to be meaningfully better, but it looks so cool. Oh yeah, have we told them how much it costs yet? No. Oh. You wanna be the one to break it to them? It's two grand. This thing's two grand. Yeah. <laughs> the not copper version is a thousand dollars, but like you want the copper one. Man, I love this thing. And I love telling people about our sponsor. Delete me. Can you remember how many times you've willingly given out your email, phone number, or home address on the internet? I mean, let's be honest, you really think you're gonna win that free TV? <sighs> okay, fine, we've all done it, but every time you fill in your information somewhere, you open yourself up to getting your data stolen by a data broker and sold to the highest bidder. If you feel like you're getting more of those early AM cold calls or random emails popping your inbox, that could be why. But the damage is not irreversible. Delete me can help. They take the information you want removed, reach out to hundreds of data brokers, and request it gets taken off their lists. You'll get regularly scheduled reports of where your data was removed from too, so you can directly correlate the decrease in spam with how much information is taken off the web. And with their family plans, you and up to three other loved ones can stay protected too. Sign up for a plan that fits your needs and join deleteme.com slash LTT20 and use code LTT20 at checkout for 20% off. If you guys enjoyed this video, why don't you check out the original look at the original prototype? 
eight years ago. It changed a lot. So did our videos. Yeah.